Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, Jules Montagnier Incorporated, makers of fine cosmetics, makers of Stop Ed spray deodorant, the deodorant that is changing a nation's habit. The deodorant you apply like this. Poof, there goes perspiration. Invite you to enjoy television's gayest game. What's my line? <laughs> Let's meet our What's My Line panel of well-known personalities whose lines you already know. First, the popular television and radio personality, Miss Betty Furness. On my left, the noted American poet, Mr. Louis Undermeyer. Thank you, Betty. And on my left, the little girl who knows all the big answers, Arlene. And on my left, our guest panelist this evening, who was brought by Columbia from the West Coast to the East Coast. We're proud and happy to have him here. I'm sure many of you have seen him fill very ably the shoes of Arthur Godfrey on, I believe, Talent Scouts. The fine new comedian, Mr. Steve Allen. And way over here on my left, it's a good thing I have a long left, we have our head man tonight, John Daly. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to What's My Line, presented by Stop It. Once again tonight, we're going to put our cameras close up on a few people from some varied, perhaps unexpected occupations, all of them here to give the panel a run for the money and, if they can, carry home some prizes. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel a little bit later in the show, but now to start things rolling, it's time for the experts to meet our first challenger, whose job they will have to spot. So will you sign in, please, ma'am? <coughs> Dorothy Hoover. Is that right? Fine. Good to see you. How are you? Now, will you tell us... Oh, don't run away from me. I hardly know you yet. Tell us, first of all, where you live. Hopatcon, New Jersey. Hopatcon, New Jersey. Well, I didn't think I could pronounce that, but I did get it out. Well, you've come uh, quite a bit of a way to see us, so I know you'd like to see our friends over here on the panel a little bit closer. So will you take a walk down in front of the panel for me, please? Miss Hopatcon... I mean, Miss Hoover, I should say. Could I see that ring? I used to be in the ring business. Uh huh. <laughs> a platinum wedding ring. Oh no. <laughs> but it's not a wedding, wedding ring. <laughs> but not platinum. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I see the inside of your hands, Miss Hoover? Thank you. She runs over. Mrs. Hoover. Mrs. Hoover. Yes. Mrs. Hoover, yes. Mrs. Hoover, will please. you come over here and sit down next to me now, please? And on the basis of your handwriting, what mm. you said, how you said it, and the close look that Mr. Undermeyer has had at your wedding ring, and uh, the close, close look that Miss Bird has had at your hands. We'll give them one free guess as to what your line may be, and we'll begin the free guesses with Miss Furness. I think she's a school teacher. A school teacher, Mr. Randemeyer. No, I think she works a Hoover, uh, a Hoover, uh, a Hoover. Oh, a, a Hoover, <laughs> yes, thank you. You nearly didn't get that out. Miss Francis. I don't know, do you mean president, apron, or vacuum cleaner? <laughs> <laughs> I think she uh, is a comptometrist. A comptometrist, Mr. Allen. What is that? I was just going to ask that question myself. <laughs> I think she's a Republican. A Republican? <laughs> Well, I'm afraid you're all wrong, and so we'll let our viewers at home get a really close look at Mrs. Hoover, and at the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. But, panel, you're going to have to dig for facts. You know what the rules are. You ask questions in turn to be answered yes or no. Each no answer will cost the panel $5. We keep the record up here. Ten no's, and you will have lost the game. Now, we'll give you one more bit of help. Mrs. Hoover is salaried. With that, we'll begin the general questioning with Mr. Rademeyer. Just a minute. Uh... Uh, she is salaried. Yes. Uh, that is, she works for a concern. I gather a, somehow or other, a profit-making concern? Yes. A profit-making concern. Uh, does this profit-making concern sell products? Yes. Uh, are these products which could be delivered, let's say, to a home? Yes. Could they be used in a home? Yes. Uh, they could be used. They are used in a home. That's right. Would they give pleasure to men? Yes. Oh, yeah, I should say. <laughs> would they give pleasure to women? Yes. They would. Everybody's uh, <laughs> They are products in a home. Could you, could you sit on them? <laughs> I don't think so. One down to time to go. Miss Fred. <laughs> do you, uh, uh, do you uh, work in one place? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. That wasn't much help. No. This, uh, this product, could it be, 
considered at all edible? Could you take it by mouth? Yes. Uh, if you took a lot of it in a glass, would it leave you a little woozy, maybe? No. <laughs> Three thousand seven to go, Miss Belton. I'm ashamed of you thinking of things like that. Miss <laughs> Burnett. Uh, is it a solid? Yes. Yes. Yeah, kind of a mushy solid. No, mushy. No, 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 it's no, a solid. It's a solid. Uh, does it um, does it come in a box? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Rondemeyer. It comes in something. It doesn't just come loose. I mean, it doesn't just get there. Uh, well, now... It's you... never wrapped. It is Don't never give him any wrapped. information now. No, go on, Mr. Rondemeyer. You mean it floats through the air with the greatest of ease? <laughs> it is never wrapped. Wait a Oh, is it a product, an edible product that gets to your home on its own four feet? <laughs> no. Five down and Such five as. to Miss Francis. A lamb. <laughs> is it a vegetable as opposed to animal? Neither. Mm. Six down and four to go. I consider Mrs. Hoover an authority on this matter, and she <laughs> said neither, so that's no. Neither. All right, Mr. Mineral. Allen. Is it mineral? This might be the wrong program all of a sudden here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say things like that. Is it mineral? Well, um, it's a very difficult question to answer. In these very broad categories of, of uh, animal, vegetable, and mineral, uh, John, I think probably be... we would have to accept that it's closer to mineral than anything else. Well, and is it uh, in any loose way a, a cosmetic? No. No, no cosmetic. Seven down and when three to go. When have you been eating cosmetics? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Burnett. I'm going to swallow a little toothpaste. There's no call for a consultation. Please, Miss Burnett. Um, yeah, I understood that apparently men got more pleasure than women from eating this edible product. Was I right? Well, it's a little difficult, isn't it, really, to answer that one? I think perhaps what we'd better say is that it's possible for both sexes to get an equal amount of pleasure out of it. <laughs> Is this product actually eaten, or is it just chewed, maybe? <laughs> is this product actually eaten, or is it Rather just chewed? Rather than well, being... it's very hard to, to, to answer. That's two questions, isn't it, yes, John? Is this product actually eaten, uh, swallowed? Uh, <laughs> well... Well, uh, that's a very interesting question, you know. It really is. Uh, let's go ahead and stop. Sometimes it is. And um, ultimately, it finds its way into the stomach, I imagine. And, you know, if you use it that way, one ultimately... <laughs> well, <laughs> I want to be as helpful as I can, Miss Burnett. I'd like to have a consultation on All right, you with may... the group, because I'm looking for ideas. You can have 25 seconds for a consultation. Go ahead. I think we ought to find out, is it a combination of things? Is it a synthetic product, or is it an actual product like a fish, fowl, vegetable, and so forth? Is well, it a synthetic to... thing? We, what, we ought to find yet. out what kind of a store you'd buy it in. Ask all those questions. Uh, is it all of them at once? Is, it, uh, is this product sold in a grocery store? No. Got rid of me. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Underby. I will now ask Miss Vanessa's question. <laughs> is this product a synthetic product? Is it made of different elements? Well, now we come to the point of, of elements. Everything is made of different elements, but no. do you oh. mean in, in uh, a... Uh, no. Lamb is made of lamb. Mm. Spinach is made of spinach. Uh, well, in this case, you just dragged yourself a big, fat no. Nine down and one to go, Miss Brent. Is it something that uh, is uh, eaten or chewed sometimes between meals? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking of, uh, does it... It doesn't come wrapped. You can't have chewing gum like <laughs> No, uh, it, it, it would not be chewed except in rare instances between wouldn't meals. Be I'll be honest with that. It agreement. wouldn't be chewed. Ordinarily, you would swallow it. Is, it did we d establish that this was a solid or a liquid, John? We established it was a solid, yes. It's a solid. Yes. Am I being helpful? <laughs> Swell. Swell. Wait, I thought wait, so wait, too. Wait, 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 we better have another wait, consultation. Wait, We're all right, i give you 20 seconds question. for a consultation. She brings I've never thought of anything like a pill. Anything in, in the medical world. That comes in a bottle of pills. Oh, yeah. you, you roll yours home, I suppose. <laughs> is, it, uh, is it something you might get in a drugstore? No. See? Well, now, this is difficult. I hate to give you a flat no on this, because there, there would be instances oh, when you would get it in a drugstore. Oh. So you go ahead, Miss Francis. Mm. Can you do anything with it besides put it in your mouth? Ooh, 
Yeah. In fact, you should do other things with it besides put it in your mouth. Yeah. yeah. You don't rub it in your hair. <laughs> Could you rub it in your hair? Well, Did I would. Do you any good if you did? <laughs> no. no. out and on to go. What is it? Mrs. Hoover is a lady ice man or ice woman. Oh, I I really thought about it. We also had a lot of fun. Uh, you, I think you will agree it's closer to being mineral than anything else. Isn't that right, Mr. Ronemeyer? Yes. It's, I'd what? say, a nice job if you can get it. A nice job if you can get it. Well, Mrs. Hoover, you did very well with the prizes. Needless to say, we hope you enjoyed yourself. Thanks for being our guest in What's My Life. Good night. All right, now let's see what we do with challenger number two. Will you sign in, please, sir? <laughs> O.M. Reason. Is that right, sir? Fine. Good to see you. Well, first of all, where you live? Two Gardens. Two Gardens. That's out on Long Island, isn't That's it? Right. Well, then you're familiar with our friends over here, and they want to become familiar with you. So will you walk down in front of the panel for me? Shake hands, Mr. Reason. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> no wedding ring. What do you call that? I don't know. What do you call it? It's not a bracelet. You always think that affects a man's pos uh, profession. Yes, All right, Mr. Reason, you come over here and sit down next to me now, if you will. And on the basis of your handwriting, what you said, how you said it, and the close look that the members of the panel have had at you, we're going to give them one free guess as to what your line may be. We'll begin the free guesses with Miss Burnett. Oh, he's got to be a, a handwriting analyst with that one. A handwriting book. analyst? Mr. Rundemeyer. No, I think he's an expert accountant from Bronxville. Miss Francis. I think he embroiders the names inside of fur coats. <laughs> Mr. Allen. I think he's a frustrated barber. A frustrated barber. Well, no, I'm afraid you're all wrong, so we'll let our viewers at home have a really close look at Mr. Reason. At the same time, we'll tell them what his line is, but you've got to dig for facts. I won't go through all the rules again. Let it suffice that every no answer you get is going to cost the panel $5. We keep the record up here. Ten no's and you would have lost the game. One more bit of help. Mr. Reason is self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Mr. Allen. Uh, you're self-employed. Do you, uh, do you handle or deal in products? Yes. A product? Uh, <clears throat> could it be, uh, worn? Yes. Gee, I didn't expect to get this good so soon. <laughs> Go ahead. I got it, but I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> uh, it's worn. Uh, would it be, uh, Something you might see in, in a, a casual surroundings, like at the beach or something? Like that. Could it yes. be worn at the... Yes. <laughs> you're doing great. Uh, I know what you're thinking, and if you ask him if he models them, I'll throw the death. <laughs> <laughs> no, it um, can be worn at the beach. Would it be all right to wear one of these and nothing else? Uh... <laughs> Um, is, this a, is, is this an article of clothing that you make? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Rundemeyer. Oh. Not an article of clothing. Is it an article of decoration? Mm. No. Well, no, I can't. I, I think no. we'll have to not give him a flat no on that. It, it serves a decorative purpose. Uh, therefore, we, we'll say it embellishes uh, in one way or another. So you go ahead, Mr. Rundemeyer. But it is an article which is worn and which can be decorative or useful too, maybe, in a sense, in a broad, in a very broad, special sense. In a very uh, broad, broad, special <laughs> sense, it can be very useful, Mr. Rundemeyer. Is it something that you might be able, let's say, to rent, and if you don't like it, give it back and get another market? Oh, no, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> Three dollars and seven to go, Miss Francis. Is this something that almost everybody has? Yes. Well, no, that I'm afraid, Almost I'm afraid there. All of well, his friends have one. All of his friends do, <laughs> but I have different kinds of friends, and I think to, not to be misleading, we'll have to say it's four down and six to go. Mr. Thank Allen. Uh, I don't know if we've established this. Is it something that women wear predominantly? Has that been established? Predominantly? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think we can say mm -hmm. yes to that, huh? Not recently. Well, these fads do change. We'll say yes to that, Mr. Allen. 
I gather it's something that they don't wear anymore by that. Uh... No, he says that has changed. Maybe no, you mustn't assume. Women wear it predominantly. We'll put oh. it that way. You go on from there. I see. Um, is it an undergarment of any kind? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Finette. Is it uh, extra adornment such as jewelry? It's a kindred field. Hmm. We'll give you a yes on that, Miss Finette. Go on. Uh, does this article have any use aside from a decorative purpose? Primarily useful. Uh, yes, I think we've got to buy that. It's useful to have on some occasions, I must admit. <laughs> on that basis, yes. It's useful to have on some occasions, period. Uh, is it made of leather? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Undermeyer. I think I've got it. I think if it is useful on some occasions and got a big laugh, and more women wear it than men, but men sometimes wear it. Yes. Is it of metal? Yes. Is it of precious metal? Yes. Is it used for a special occasion? Yes. Could it possibly be a symbol? Yes. Could it be a wedding ring? <laughs> That's absolutely right. But the reason is a wedding ring manufacturer. A wedding ring manufacturer. Very fine job, panel. Mr. Reason, you did fairly well with your prizes. We hope you enjoyed yourself. Thank Thanks you. for being our we guest sure in What's My Line. Good night, sir. Thank you. Good night. And now, before we meet our mystery guest for this evening, here's... And now we come to the regular special feature of our show, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. And since our experts over here would recognize our famous guest by sight, we have provided them with blindfolds to make this a difficult test in personality identification. Are those blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Well, now, as you all know, panel, the uh, mystery challenger, we dispense with the usual amenities, get right down to the general questioning. So we'll begin that general questioning with Mr. Allen. Well, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> Judging by the uh, length of the applause, I'd say he's a very famous person, and so I'm going to take a guess also judging by the audience reaction that he's uh, in the entertainment business, is that right? No. A one down and nine to go, Miss Burnett. Are you in government? Yes. Are you in uh, New York City government? Two down and eight to go, Mr. Rundemeyer. Branch of what we would call the federal government. Yes. Uh, would you be in, uh, in an active part of it rather than Sedentary. That is, would you move around rather than sit on a bench? <laughs> usually. <laughs> he does move around. Yes, usually is the answer. Would you move around in some kind of uh, machine, vehicle, vessel, or something like that? Yes. You would be. Would you be in some branch of the military? Yes. The army? No. <laughs> Three down to seven to go, Miss Preston. Uh, the Navy? Yes. Uh... Gosh. Are you in uniform? No. Well, he's not in uniform right now. I think rather than give you a flat no on this, Miss Francis, we would say that um, he has Ordinarily? a complete right to wear his uniform if he chooses to do so. Is that right, sir? Correct. So uh, go ahead, Miss Francis. Are you actively associated with the Navy at the present time? No. Uh, four down and six to go, but don't be misled. Mr. Allen. We've established the men's in federal government, is that yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. No, he's not an oh dear. You go on, Mr. Allen. <laughs> Can we have a did, conference? Did you run for office uh, within the last uh, two years? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Burnett. Could we have a conference? I'm yes, you may have 20 seconds conference. for a conference. Well, since he was in the Navy and is not at present, could it be Admiral Farragut or somebody like that? <laughs> I'm not there <dead> yet. <laughs> well, I was only thinking. I don't know. <laughs> All right, Miss Burnett, you begin again. Um... Since you, you, apparently you, you've been in the Navy and are not now, have, have, do you hold another job at the present time? Yes. 
Louis, if you snap your fingers, take the question. Oh, no. All right, Mr. Rundemeyer, you pick up. You have been in the Navy, and you hold another job now, still with the government. I'm still in the Navy. You're still I'm in the Navy. another job. I'm holding another, another job. job. Uh, would you have been rather a top man in the Navy? Uh, modesty makes me uh, blush, but I'm afraid I'll have to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> would you have a little chip of your own, maybe? No. <laughs> you mean as of now, Mr. Undermeyer? Yeah, I don't mean as of now. I mean, when he was in the Navy, w did he have a little chip of his own, and could he tell other ships what to do? Yes. I didn't have a little chip of my own, but I could tell other ships what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have been, or are you still an admiral? I didn't understand. Would you have been, or are you still an admiral? Yes. Would your last name begin with an H? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> Am I right? Correct. Admiral Hogg. That's right. Hey, Admiral Harvey, we're very proud and very happy to have you with us, and we will send a check in your name to the American Red Cross. Thank you very much. I appreciate that very much, because right now is a very crucial time, and the Red Cross needs ever a better help they can get, and I hope everybody in this audience are going to do their part. Well, I'm sure they will, and thanks very much for being our guest and welcome to our life. Good night. Now, while our next challenger is getting ready to sign in... All right, so you didn't have any... Another challenger, will you sign in, please, sir? Daniel Cohen, is that right? Fine. How are you? It's good to see you. Can you tell us first of all where you live? The Bronx, New York. In the Bronx, New Bronx, York. York. Yes, sir. Daniel, you're about to go into the lion's den. Will you please walk down in front of the panel? <laughs> Daniel, could you, uh, could you bend over and touch your toes without bending your knees? Bravo. Can you bend you your knees without your toes? Mr. Cohen, <laughs> time is running out, so you come on over here and sit down next to me, and on the basis of your handwriting, what you've said, how you've said it, and a very brief look at you by our panel experts, we'll give them one free guess as to what your line may be. Ms. Finette. I think he's a necktie salesman. A necktie salesman. Mr. Undermeyer. I'll stick along with that lion thing. I think he's a lion tamer in the zoo. Uh, Miss Francis. I think he's a bead stringer. Mr. Allen. <laughs> a policeman. No, I'm afraid you're all wrong. We'll let our viewers at home have a really close look at Mr. Cohen. At the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. However, panel, you're going to have to dig. You know the rules. Ask questions in turn for yes or no answers. Each no will cost the panel $5. We keep the record up here. Ten no's and you've lost the game. One more bit of help. We've only got about three minutes for this. Mr. Cohen is salaried. With that, we'll begin the general questioning with Miss Francis. Uh, do you deal in services, Mr. Cohen? Um, uh, yes. Is there a product involved in your services? Yes. Do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. Well, we've killed those off. Now then, now I get the no. Uh, do you work indoors? Yes. Do you work in an office? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Um, outside of shaking hands, do you, uh, is it required that you touch people in, in the performance of your duties? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Finette. Do you work in a store? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Rundabaya. Do you work in some kind of enclosure? Yes. Is it in something uh, like a fairly large enclosure? Yes. Would it be something where they sold, I hate to say items of food, but somehow or other my instinct says, tonight is a big food night. Has it anything to do with food? No. Four Please. down and six to go. What an instinct you have. Miss Francis. Does the job that you have give people pleasure? Yes. Oh, yeah. Ultimately, I would say so, yes. <laughs> You go ahead, Ultimately, it does? Yes, indeed. Uh, <laughs> do, uh, is the product involved that you are involved with, is it anything you can eat? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Food. Allen. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you wear any kind of a uniform or special garb of any kind? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Furness. Did you require any special training for this job? Yes. Of a sort, yes. Uh, this product uh, that, that you use in connection with the job, uh, is it small, as of small enough so you could lift it in your hand? Yes. Uh, is it a uh, mechanical thing? No. You mean the product that is associated yes. with his services, is it a mechanical thing? Mm -hmm. Nah. Three, uh, seven down and three to go, Mr. Undermeyer. One minute to go, two. Is it an animate thing? I mean, is it a living thing rather than a mechanical? Mechanical, I mean inanimate. What? Now, do this all over again. You've got to be right in the middle of the field. Start again, Mr. Rundemeyer. Uh, can I withdraw that question? You can Very withdraw quick. that question, yes, Is indeed. this thing a, a solid article? 
or not slippery like mercury or something. <laughs> That's right. It's a it's solid article. Solid yes. article. Mm -hmm. Is it any form of toy? No. No. <laughs> Miss Francis? Is there anything you might put on? Yes. Is it a part of your apparel? Well, is it apparel you mean? Is it apparel? Yes. Yes. And one time for about one more question. Uh, is it sold for mostly for men? No. No, it isn't sold mostly for men. I'm afraid we're going to have to give this to Mr. Cohen by default. He uh, knits women's sweaters. Well, bless his heart. <laughs> and so we have to give him a full prize. And thanks very much for being our guest and watch my line. And good night, sir. <laughs> now, in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to give you a preview look at a picture of one of the challengers whose line our panel will be asked to try and spot in our next pro week at this same time. Our panel of experts will be asked, what's my line by this man? Would you know what his occupation is? Could you spot his line? Well, for the answer to this and other personality puzzles, be sure to tune in again next Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when once again, Stop It invites you to play What's My Line for other localities Check your newspaper for the date and the time of our weekly series. Until then, this is John Daly saying good night, Betty. Good night, Louis. Good night, Arlene. Good night, Steve. Good night, John. And good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line? <laughs> What's My Line has been presented by Jules Montagnier, Incorporated, produced for CBS by Mark Goodson and Bill Totten. Coordinator of production, Bob Bach, and directed by Franklin Heller. Remember to look in Sunday night for What's My Line? <laughs>